H2O is going to have our second, uh, we'll say annual because this was a great thing last year, homecoming dance. That Saturday night, it'll be off campus. It'll be a very non-threatening place. It'll be semi-formal if you want to dress up. If you don't want to dress up, that's still cool. Just come dressed. Yeah, just come dressed. <laughs> okay, that's all I ask you. Please come dressed. Uh, we're going to have a great time. There is no admission. We're going to have some snacks and things going on there. It'll be from 8 to midnight, homecoming night. And uh, details will be coming uh, in the next week or so about where it's going to be and all that good stuff. But make your plans now. You do not want to miss this. We had a great time. We literally packed the place last year to fire code. So I'd like to do it again. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Sean will be there. So you definitely want to come and see Sean. Get up, Sean. Sean will be there. Okay. And there were some of us that went to Glorietta that knows what Sean can do on a dance floor. Is that right? We're good. We're good. Okay. Just say it. Sean is our hero. We're going to do that. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, Roger, you got you guys got games this weekend? We, yes, yes, we, we do have games. We have games Friday and Sunday. Here? Yes. Friday. And who are you playing? Um, Ohio Valley Friday and, um, you know. Um, somebody else Sunday. And somebody else on Sunday. Finley on Sunday. Finley on Sunday. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. If you hadn't watched the soccer team, you'd have to watch those guys. Like, girls playing too? Um, don't know. Uh, no. That doesn't count. It doesn't count. Carly, when's fall season start? November. We're soon. We're soon. We're soon. When's the first uh, equestrian? This weekend. Anyway. Where? Finley. 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 Uh, text me details and addresses and I'll spread it out among S2O. Okay. okay. I'll first club. Okay. Like, yeah, Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, it's our first club place ever. So. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, freshman. Freshman. When we're done tonight, I would really like to ask you to, to hang around for a little bit. I'd like to visit with you for just a little bit. we got a house full of freshmen tonight, too. So uh, just kind of come on down here and hang out and uh, we'll spend some time chatting. Got something for you. Okay. It is that time of year, speaking of homecoming, that we as H2O get to elect our representative for homecoming, which means we need to elect a homecoming king and a homecoming queen representative. Here are some of the requirements that they have set forth that we must do. Number one is they must be a junior or a senior. Okay? Have to be a junior or a senior. They need to be a, a leader in the organization. In other words, if you, you know, see them out, you definitely want to know that you know, those, those people represent H2O on a daily basis, not just for this. And so what we want to do is we want to take nominations now for we'll do homecoming queen rep first. Now for you freshmen, this is the way this works. All organizations submit our nominations, okay, our representatives. Then for three days in October, you will get to vote on the ones you want to see. And the top three make it to the homecoming court. And the top vote getter becomes homecoming king and homecoming queen. And that is never announced until that day of homecoming. The top three will proceed out. That's kind of, kind of a big thing. So, we will now take nominations for Homecoming Queen. Tabitha. Tabitha? Okay. I need something else to do. Okay. Who's junior and seniors? Okay. Okay. Juniors, juniors and seniors, stand up. Girls, stand up, please. Stand up. I'm trying. Juniors and seniors, stand up. I'm standing up now. I'm already nominated. Oh. You are nominated? Okay. Yeah. So is Dante. Okay. Dante? Okay. Okay. I don't want to vote for you anyway. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. We got. We have three. We have three juniors and seniors: Naomi, Tabitha, and Jenna. Okay. You other two girls? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So these are the three. Tab has been nominated. Do you, does anybody want to nominate either of the other girls? Right here. Okay. Jenna. Okay. Okay, that's all three of them. Okay, here's how this is going to go. Okay, Tab, raise your hand. Okay, that's Tabitha. This is Naomi. This is Jenna. Okay, very good. Now, here's the way this is going to work. It's going to have to be on the honor system. I'm going to ask everyone in the building. 
to bow your heads and close your eyes. And when I call out names, raise your hand. Okay? When I call out names, raise your hand. Uh, Dante, Dante, would you help me count? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Dante's gonna help me. And you can still vote, but okay. I gotta remember one of that. Alright. For Tabitha, raise your hand. Okay? Okay, hands down. Okay, for Jenna. Okay, for Naomi. Okay. Take nominations for. I'm sorry, sir. You're allowed to vote. Well, yes, you're allowed to vote once. Did anybody vote twice? Did any seriously? Did anybody vote twice? Be honest. Be honest. Did you? Okay. Do we need to vote again? Yeah, do it again. I, I agree. Okay, we're going to vote again. Please vote one time. Okay. It's down. I close. Okay. Here we go. Okay, for Tabitha. Okay, hands down. Head still bowed. We're voting for homecoming queen. Here's the options: Tabitha, Naomi, Jenna. Okay. Now we've already voted for Tabitha. For the fix of the vote. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. You are. Well, you still get the vote. Okay. Okay. Now then, we have the fourth. Everybody look up for me. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, Katie, wait around. Katie is ace. Katie's the senior. Okay, so now Katie's in the mix. Okay? Katie's wait, in the mix. Did, did y'all technically nominate her just to put that out there? Because I don't want to yeah. be a long I nominated time. her. Okay. Because okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I know in some organizations, people get on the list, they don't get nominated, they have a big fit, and I didn't want that. Exactly. I'm sorry. And, okay. okay. So we're cool with that? Just wanted to clear it up. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Okay, here we go again. We got four. All right, everybody down. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Okay, everybody down. And for Tabitha. Jenna. Okay. For Naomi. Okay, hands down. For Katie. Senior, junior and senior guys stand up that has not been nominated. That has not been, I mean, that is not, excuse me, that has not been recommended from another organization. Okay? Okay. Okay. Roger. Sean. Smithers. Okay. And Dante, you are already represented. Is that correct? For a choir. And Devin. Oh, Devin. Okay. <laughs> sorry, Devin. I'm so sorry, Devin. I'm so sorry, Devin. 
I know, I know, you didn't count me because I graduated <laughs> once. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Okay, you guys down? We're fixing the boat. Yeah. Okay, so you guys. Okay. Because somebody nominated everybody. Yeah. Sean, Smith, Devin, Roger. Right. Okay, all right. Here we go. Wait, wait. Okay. And we, can, we still vote, right? And you guys can still vote. Okay. Roger, Sean, Smith, and Devin. That's your four choices. Everybody head down, eyes closed. Okay. Four. Roger. Okay, down for Sean. Okay, hands down for Smith. Okay, hands down for Devin. Okay, hands down. Okay, folks, you have just nominated Smith and Tap. Okay, give it up for these two. Okay, now we're going to when we speech, speech. Okay, when, when we, we do get those things out, guys, you really want to get into Gilmore and start voting. And I'm not sure, how does the voting work? Do you write people's names down and put it in a box? They have like a little sheet of paper and you kind of circle the names and then put them in. Do you get to vote for three? Is three. that the way it works? I think you yeah. vote for three each. Three. Vote for three. Three guys, three girls. Okay. All right. Very good. <coughs> I want to think it's the 11th, 12th, and 13th, or 12th, 13th, and 14th. Let me jump on the calendar real quick. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is 11, 12, and 13. So I'm thinking that's what it is. Word will get out. Please see if the uh, cats are pulling this off too, isn't it? Are y'all responsible for this or is this still there? Actually, um, I'm, I'm referring to you, Ben. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's um, I haven't decided if I want it to be, it, it's just up to discretion. I'll talk to the board members, but probably make it the uh, 12, 13, 14, not the Monday, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So I'll probably make it. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, if, if that changes, would you holler? Yeah, let's do go, guys. Okay, very good. Thank you, Roger. Okay, guys, anything else before we get started? We're going to worship for a while tonight. Anything? Okay, let's open with a word of prayer, and then uh, we're going to worship. Just kind of get quiet just for a minute. Let's just kind of relax. Well, let's just try to forget about what the week has been, and uh, let's just allow God to work tonight. Because we're going to take a pretty unique look at a passage of Scripture tonight that uh, I would hope brings some life to us in a brand new way, in a brand new manner. talks about what's more important than food. And as you're here tonight, as you're quiet before the Lord, ask yourself what really is more important to you than food. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for an opportunity just to come to your house. Father, I pray tonight that you will eliminate all of the obstacles that is keeping us from getting to you. Father, that you will draw us in, you will draw us close. Father, forgive me right there. Father, everything that we do, say and think tonight. Stand on the post of your
Um, my sister-in-law, she wasn't able to have babies for a while, and last week she had twins, so praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Wow. Any other prayer requests today? Or praises for that matter? I have a praise. Um, I did my internship this summer at a place called Open Arms and Family, and they actually offered me a part-time job, and I started on the 17th.
And if you'd have saw the buffet that Franny had outside, thanks to Franny, you'll know that there's a couple more of us that love food. What's your favorite food? Come on, jump out there. Favorite food? Fried chicken. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Okay, that's a home. Travis? Bacon and mac and cheese. Julie? Pepperoni rolls. Pepperoni rolls, okay. Ice cream. Ice cream. John? Pizza. Pizza. Steak. Steak. Say it again. Very few people know what that is, but it is good. Ham cheeseburgers. <laughs> the food of champions. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Fried, chicken. Fried, chicken. Fried okra. Teriyaki chicken. Teriyaki chicken. Teriyaki chicken. Teriyaki chicken. Cheesy potatoes. Cheesy potatoes. Make sure you add fried chicken to that. Oh, well, I got fried chicken. Did I tell you what's your favorite food? Uh, raspberry flavored peaches. Well, I'm going to pray for you tonight. <laughs> I'm seriously going to pray for you now. Guys, I have eight. I have eight from one corner of the of the country, literally, from one coast to another coast, from one border all the way to the other border, and I have ate everything you would almost think imaginable. I've had grilled alligator. I've had grilled rattlesnake. I'm a sushi fanatic. Love sushi. I've ate baby... Okay, what is the plural? <laughs> Octopi. <laughs> Little baby ones, but but whole. Uh, Been there, done that. I can throw down some enchiladas. I really don't like fried chicken. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. What is wrong? With <laughs> but now I can tear up cheeseburgers. <laughs> I'm a cheeseburger beast. Yes, ma'am. I have. Ma'am. Been there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cheeseburger? No kidding. About that big around? About that thick? The burger. Not the bread. I'm talking about the meat. Hey, that big around. About that big around. Grilled. With about three kinds of cheese on it. And stack them up the veggies. And only at five guys do you get the best Cajun fries. <laughs> Gotta get the Cajun fries going out there. And you cannot have a meal without sweet tea. Ooh, yeah. And then I top it off with a slice about that big of cheese. <laughs> Nice. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a meal. You can give it to me, stick a fork in me, because I'm done. I'm done. I love food. There's not a one of us in this room that doesn't like food, that didn't appreciate it. Have you ever gone long periods of time without food, though? Okay. What, what's it like, Liz? How, how does your body feel without food? Hungry. Okay. Okay. Weak. Do you, I'm sorry, sluggish? Sluggish. Do you have like a gnawing in your stomach? You know that feeling? Yeah. Okay. Feel like it's eating yourself from the inside out, though. Okay. Food. Have you ever wondered, though, what was more important to Jesus than food? Now, you got to remember, Jesus is God. Right? Jesus is God come to earth. So have you ever really wondered what is more important to, to Jesus than food? I'm rereading the book of John for about the hundredth time. No, no joke. And it's, there's just been something that has just wrapped around me in the past few days uh, in, where I'm studying and I'm going to read you the passage. I'm going to John chapter 4. If you just want to kind of crawl back over there. John chapter 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this story up. And we've looked at this story on, on several occasions and, and looked at different parts of it. This is where Jesus has gone and, and, and he's making a journey and he is now into the, the area of Samaria. And we know that he is at Jacob's well. And while he is there and he is resting, the disciples have gone off to get, to get food. 
they've gone down to Kroger's and they, they're, they're at the grocery And they're shopping and they're getting there, they're sliding their Kroger card and they're trying to get the discounts and all of a sudden get the gas for their, well, you know what I'm saying. And they're, they're making their way back. But here's Jesus parked up on Jacob's well. And while he's there, a Samaritan woman comes out to get water from the well. And, and it's such an interesting conversation that Jesus has with the woman because there he talks about living water, how that if she would drink of the water that he would uh, give to her that she would never thirst again. And it's just a wonderful conversation that goes there. And that actually starts at the, the first verse of chapter 4. And, and, and you guys can really wrap yourself in around the great story. So what I want to do is I want to take this now to verse 27. And the disciples are now back from Kroger's. And they're all carrying their little bag of groceries. And they're coming up and they've got sacks on this arm and sacks on this arm and, and they're back and they're, they're walking up to Jesus and just as they are approaching, the Samaritan woman leaves to go back into the town. Verse 27. Just then his disciples arrived. They were astonished to find him talking to a woman, but none of them asked why that he was doing it or what he had been discussing. The woman left her water jar beside the well and went back to the village and told everyone, come and meet a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus to eat. Dude, you, you right here, we've got you. We are concerned about you, Jesus. We do not want to see you get hungry. We don't want to see you get weak. We don't want to see you struggle or stumble. We don't want you to have that gnawing in your stomach that comes from not eating. We want you to be well nourished because we believe in you. We know you are the Messiah. And we want to take care of you. We have got food for you here. Verse 32. No. He said, I have food that you don't know about. Now, I would dare say that most of us have got food hidden in our dorm. Am I right about it? Especially you freshmen, you got food hidden in your dorm rooms that you don't want your roommate to find. I got a big uh -huh going on over here. So, you know, okay. See, so, okay. We hide food. What did you got hidden? Go ahead. Is there anybody in the room that hasn't hid food? Franny, nobody wants to touch your food because they'll, they'll know the little Tasmanian devil will come out on them. Yeah, so they don't they bother the That's right. But we, we hide food. We hide it. No, Jesus said, I have food that you don't know about. Now, the disciples have got to have this like, what? Look going on there. <laughs> what in the world? Dude, you're talking to Jesus. You've been holding out on us. You've got Snickers somewhere that we don't know about. Look at your passengers right I love the disciples' next question. They, and they're asking this to each other. And you can just see the, the little chatter going, <laughs> who brought it to him? Where did it come from? Did he go to Kroger's and did tell him about it? Where did the food come from? And then Jesus takes us on a journey so deep that it just blows our mind. And he goes beyond the concept of a Jerusalem or a Samaria Kroger. He talks about something that the disciples were not prepared for. Because isn't it just like Jesus to take an everyday thing and to turn it spiritual and to teach it? And this is what he did. Verse 34. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Folks, that is about as deep as it can get right there. He is saying that 
the accomplishment of the mission that God has set before him is more important than earthly food. Doing what his father set him on that earth to do is more important than a man, than any man, than all men. And when you look at, at different translations and you really break this down in the Greek and you look at the word nourishment, it, it comes back to three words. Nourishment is one. Or my food comes from doing the will of God. Or my meat comes from doing the will of God. Now, Ali just left. And I, is Ali the only vegetarian? Is there any other vegetarians in the house? Who is? Liz, are you one? Okay. <laughs> Okay, folks, I'm going to be real honest with you. I respect that to the absolute fullest. I really do because that is a decision that if that individual has an alley, uh, Dittman is, and, and I, she can eat some amazing things that is that's beautiful. But I've never been that way, and when I get ready to throw down a meal, I want some meat. <laughs> I want my bologna thick. Okay? I want my steak about the size of a pub cat. I want my ham to cover my plate. Y'all know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want bacon. I want so much bacon on my plate that it takes me two tong fools to grab it and throw it on my plate. I want meat with my meat. I ain't even count my sausage. Y'all you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but this old boy, this old southern boy, wants meat. You see, if we were down south, we'd have a little crawfish throw on there, too. But I want meat with my meals. But now, I can throw down some groceries with my vegetables as well. I like good, I like good veggies. I really do. I can have a whole veggie sandwich at Subway and never miss a thing. I like it. But the bottom line is, is I want meat. And traditionally, meat is always served at every meal. And when we see this, we see Jesus is telling his disciples the very sustenance, that's hard work for me to say, sustenance, that goes on my plate at my meal time, that fills me up the most, that gives me the most nourishment, the most nutrition, that fuels my body more than anything else, comes from doing the will of God. The one who sent me and profession his work. And then we chase back into what Alicia read in Deuteronomy 8. Alicia, would you would you read that again? This is Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. Big word. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It's the fifth book in the Old Testament. Read this verse, Alicia. <laughs> so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger with manna, which you did not know, nor did your father know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Wow. Man does not live by bread alone, but by what? What is it? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't live by bread, but by what? Mouth of the Lord. And then he repeats it over Matthew chapter 4. And he repeats it to Satan himself. This is right after Jesus has been baptized. And Satan has kind of swept him away and he's got him up on a hill. And, and, and Jesus has been fasting. Now listen to what I'm saying. He has been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. That is 40 days and 40 nights without food. And he did this intentionally. Fasting is an intentional thing that you do to obey God because, A, he's calling you to do that. But instead of eating, at the time, instead of eating, you are literally pouring yourself into God's word and praying and spending that extra quality time. That's what fast is. And so 40 days into this, 
After his baptism, Satan snatches him, takes him on up. I'm just going to start at verse 1 of chapter 4 Matthew. Then Jesus was led out into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he ate nothing and became very hungry. Verse 3, then the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, change these stones into loaves of bread. Dude, if you're hungry, chow down. You've got the power to make those rocks wonder bread. <laughs> Jesus said, nope. Because the scripture says, and he's quoting Deuteronomy is what he's doing. People need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. Jesus to Satan. Pow! Right in your kisser, Satan. Take that. What? What about us? If we were to say, what is more important to us than food? And I ask you this at the very beginning of our time today. What would be more important to you than food? How would you answer that? Anyone? Anyone? See, we value food. We value food. Turn to go back to the John passage. We're just a little after eight. We're gonna hang just for a little bit longer and we'll be good. Now flip on back over to John chapter 6. John 6, 26. John 6, 26. If you've never read the book of John, please do so. If you don't have a Bible, there's literally books out on the table that Brandy has made sure that we have got, and they are the Gospel of John. Please, take one. It's an amazing book. John 6, 26. Jesus replied, The truth is, you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you saw the miraculous sign. But you shouldn't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that I, the Son of Man, can give you. For God the Father has sent me for that very purpose. His mission was more important to him than physical food. What is your mission? Have you ever really wondered what is God's mission for you? If, if you will be honest, that's probably the biggest question that hangs over every student. What is God's will for my life? You ever ask that question? God, what do you want me to do? What you got for me? What is it? I'm going to sum it up like this. God has what we call a perfect will. It's God's will for you, for me. And it is a perfect will that in a perfect world where we follow him to the fullest, we are daily communing with him and we are listening and we are following him, then we follow that perfect will and everything is done. We are in total agreement with him. However, there are times that we don't think his perfect will is what's right for us. And at that point, we need smack right between the eyes if you just want to know the truth. Because that puts us thinking that we know more than God. And he allows us, there's that freedom that he's given us. He allows us to make our own choices, right? And when we make that choice, if it is out of the perfect will of God... and we still go on through it, then it becomes what we know is God's permissive will. He permits it to happen. Even though it's not His perfect will, but He will permit it to happen. And when we do our own thing and we are in God's permissive will, we suffer consequences for not following Him. Have you ever done something that you really thought God was wanting you to do, but you didn't do it, you did something else and there were consequences to pay? Have you ever been there? That's when we get out of tune with God. It's when we think that we are not in line. 
with him, and we're going to do our own thing. But I, I'm telling you guys, God has a plan for every one of us. There's no doubt about it. And when you get that plan, when you get that plan, it will satisfy you, it will nourish you, just like food does. You don't want to do anything else but that. Let me give you a great example of that, and I'm going to just tell you a little bit about that. At the age of 18, I went to work for Walmart as a, as a manager. I worked for Walmart in their management program, made my way on up into district management, and I worked for them for 10 years. I left Walmart to work for a, actually it was the largest record company in the nation. If you bought a CD cassette, well actually CDs would back then, but a cassette tape or record or anything like that, and you bought it in the, su the southern nine most states, that order had to come across my desk. And it was toward the latter part of three or four years that I had worked with this company that I, I really began to feel God tugging at my heart. And through a change of events, I left that company and I went back and I took my wife and my family and we went back to our hometown of Jonesboro, Arkansas. This was on a Wednesday. We drove two hours and we went to our home church. On Friday, two days later, we had a place to stay. On Monday, I had a new job. Six months later, I had all of it I could possibly stand. I knew what God was doing. God had placed a call on my life to go into ministry and to tell others about him and to serve him as a pastor. And from that point forward, I've served as a pastor. I've served as a youth pastor. I've been a worship pastor. I've been a collegiate pastor. And I, I stand before you to tell you that when I am doing that, I am fulfilled beyond words. But when I have had to do other things through those same times, for example, all of y'all know this, I work every day. I count fields for a living. I'm a drug dealer. My pharmacy technician. I count fields 40 hours a week. And for 40 hours a week, and it is not because of the job, it is not because of the people I work with, I am absolutely miserable. But I have to do that to support my family so that I can do what God has called me to do at Tiffany University. And at 6 o'clock every night when I can walk out that door, there's a huge thank you, Jesus, on my way to my van. There's a calmness that takes place. Sometimes I've got to go home and bang my head against the wall. And I'm not blind to have the night. I've just I gotta get out of that world because now I'm nourished because I'm doing what God has called me to do. And I'm gonna tell you real quick, there are some of you in this room, there's no doubt in my mind, God is gonna call you to do doubt in my mind. There are some of you that God is going to call to do different things in a servant church. There's some of you, it wouldn't surprise me that God says, you know something, I really need you to serve me in this location. And that might be in the far reaches of Africa. It might be Brazil. It might be Haiti. But God is calling young people today into, into ministry. And when that, when that call hits you, you can do anything else in the world, but you will never be satisfied. I have people that come to me all the time, young, old, alike, and they say, Jim, I feel like God is calling me into the ministry. How do I know? How do I know that God's calling? And this is my answer to them. And this is as honest as it can be because it's very truthful. My, my answer to them is do everything you possibly can but that. And they look at me like, you idiot? What are you talking about? I think God's calling me. So no, you don't hear what I'm saying. If you really believe God is calling you, then I want you to do whatever you can and not do it. Because when you try to do everything, if you get that feeling that you're never satisfied and you want to do something else,
that that's just not it, then you'll know that's a true call and you're only going to be satisfied when you're doing what God has called you to do. Does that make sense? Now, not every one of you would be in ministry, and I understand that. I get that. Whether you're a minister or not, God places that call on your life. God may call, I'll pick on Smith for a minute. God may call Smith into airport security. And he knows without a doubt that's what it is. Now I want you to know something. And right now, you're, you're all preparing for, for a field for a career. Whatever that field is, when you get in it, you're going to know because you're going to feel satisfied and nourished. But you're only going to know it by staying in the Word of God and by following Him and to listen to His perfect will. Does that make sense? Y'all with me on that? Because when you're not in God's perfect will, there's that gnawing, that chewing, that I'm not satisfied. Have you ever, have you ever went out to eat and it, wasn't what, it really wasn't what you wanted, but it filled you up, but you weren't satisfied? That is the feeling I'm talking about. It's doing something that fills you, but it's not satisfying. It's not nourishing you, because it's not doing the will of the Father. And all the way across this room, and there's a whole bunch of us in here from freshman all the way up to grad students, I want you to know something. God has a plan for your life. He has a perfect will for your life. There is no doubt about it. And, and you're going to work from God knows where to God knows where. I would say some of you are going to end up in Kalamazoo. And, of course, when we sat in Arkansas, it's a long way away. It's not that far away from when you live up here close to Michigan. But you're going to work in the reaches of New Mexico. You're going to work into the reaches of Mexico. God could send you to Canada. Or to any of the other countries. Or he could just have you work in a little podunk town called Pithin, Ohio. I never thought I'd be in a little podunk town called Pithin, Ohio. Never in my life did I picture this big, ugly southern boy up here. But I want you to know something. I can't be anywhere else be satisfied. This is where God has me. Right here, right now. God said, Jim, this is what I want you. I said, Lord, just provide the parts because it's going to get cold. But I want you to know something. I want you to get into the Word. I want you to seek His will. I want you to dive off into these passages that I have given you because they hold the key to finding what God's will is for and I want you to let me know. I want you to tell me, send me messages, text me. Jim, pray for me because I feel God is calling me here. I want to pray with you. I want to be there for you. I want to encourage you. Because when you sense a tug in God, of God in your life, then you need to go. If it doesn't make sense, that's probably of God. It's when it doesn't make sense that only God could do that's probably of him. Seek his word. Seek the call. My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Don't you want that satisfaction? Don't you want to feel that way? Don't you want to be so satisfied spiritually that you know without a doubt that you're following? That church is being right there in the center of God's perfect will, and He is calling us all into it. So let's get out our GPS systems, guys. There's the place we got to be. Right in the heart of it. Right there. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Father, for calling us for helping to define our call. And Father, right now, for every student that is right here, God, I ask you to please, Father, just draw them close to you so that they will sense you, they will draw to you, 
and that they will just have a burning passion to know what your will is for their life. Father, let them get lost in your word. Let them develop a passion, Father, for every word that comes off these scriptures. Father, it is your perfect will that we desire. Father, watch over us this night. Give us a great night's rest. Father, give us an amazing weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you, freshmen. I love to see you down here for just a little bit. Y'all have a great week.